I hear them calling. I hear her calling. Hello. <laughs> hey. Greta, we are such huge fans of you on Weebly Blogs. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm a fan of yours too. Oh, bless yeah, you. Yeah, I love Weebly Blogs. Oh yeah. my God, it's a love in here in Amsterdam. <laughs> now, your song, you talk about voices, and we're curious: are these voices meant to be friends or foes? Well, that depends on which voices you listen to. It's really about you know negative and positive voices in today's today's society. So, if you decide to listen to the positive ones, they are the ones that will lead you home. Yeah. And in your own life, do you have bad and good voices? I think ask any performer and they will say yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a part of, you know, being a performer and being an artist. There's always going to be positive and negative feedback. And the important thing is to really feed off the positive ones and, you know, just go with, go with your gut. And fans have wanted you to come back so long, so many <laughs> years. Why this year? Um, well, I always said, I, I never said that I w was never going to do it again, but I said that I would probably not do it again. <laughs> so uh, when I wrote Hear Them Calling, I just felt like it was the right time for me. I've been performing with Disney for, for um, a year and a half now and just performing nonstop. And I, I felt like, you know, I was, I was ready to do it again. How was that cruise? Oh, it's amazing. You know, Disney is, is you know, the biggest entertainment company in the world. They, they do things the right way, and I've learned a lot. And, like, when you're on the ship, do you have to take on a character, or is it more you're just performing songs? I'm just doing my own show. Okay. Yeah. So I get to be my own character. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're staging in Iceland. It was just so magical. Is it going to be easy to translate that to the stage in Stockholm? Um, yeah, fairly, because, I mean, we've done a lot of preparation, so we've done a lot of work beforehand, so... Um, Taking it to the to the big stage is is, um, is a challenge, but it's a fun challenge. So we're gonna we're gonna see some expect, yeah, yeah, yeah. unexpected changes. Oh. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and we're really curious: is there symbolism, for instance, when the smoke blows out of you? Yes. Um, beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is a symbolism. You know, the hands that are pushing, that those are the negative, you know, influences that are pushing you around, you know. But then when the, when the girl comes running through you, it's really about, you know, you know about the negative influences, but you have to accept it and just let it out, you know, and carry on. And now, there is one negative influence I want to address right now. People talk about copying Mon, Zelma Love, and Lorene, which I find so tired. What's your reaction? I mean, of course they're going to say that. You know, it's Eurovision, but there's nothing new under the sun in Eurovision. We've seen <laughs> singers with, you know, dancing backing vocalists, you know, for, what, 20, 30 years? <laughs> you know, and we've seen, you know, people being by themselves on stage, you know, doing a ballad. We've seen, we've seen it all. Of course, they did a new approach last year, and it was amazing. Um, but, you know, we're doing something completely different. We're going to take it even, you know, even further on the big stage. So I just, you know, I just, I just say stay tuned. <laughs> now, I, you may not know this, but I've been having visions about you, like when I'm in supermarkets, about you doing really well and okay. winning. I'm curious, do you have these visions? Do you see victory in the future? I see a victory, but on a different level. You know, victory for me means not necessarily winning Eurovision, but walking away from every single project and every single gig, Eurovision, you know, or a small concert or a big concert or a Disney, you know, show, feeling like, you know, I accomplished something. And for me, the, this opportunity really is about, you know, really getting the message out there, you know, and if I, if I know that I've touched one person with my music, then I'm, then I feel like I want something. And it was so close in Iceland. We were actually kind of surprised. Were you surprised? I was, um, but but in a really good way. What I liked about the competition was that there was a lot of diversity. Mm. So you couldn't really guess beforehand like how it would turn out. Um, and uh, I really loved the song that came in second with Anta. I I love that song. So yeah, it was it was a. It was, it was fun to see, yeah. There is a long queue of journalists. Everyone wants a piece of you. So could you quickly sing a little bit of your song before we go? I sing, um, we're, we're releasing the acoustic version on Monday. So 
Maybe we'll do something from that. I hear them calling me, I hear them whispering. They're singing now, we're coming home. Hear them calling me, I hear them howling. Singing now, we're coming home. Oh, get the woman a Grammy right now. <laughs> And finally, Greta, do you have a message for all of your fans all over Europe and on weeweeblogs.com? I do. Um, let's not listen to the negative voices and let's be each other's positive voices. Oh, she is amazing. She needs your vote. Be sure to support her.